Every sister just elbow another sister say he should have listened. Every brother, would you tap another brother and say I should have listened to her? God help me, old saints, y'all forgive me, but I gotta tell you, these hoes ain't loyal. You gotta find somebody. Uh, all right, be seated, please. What's up, guys? Alton here with another video. Um, and today we're going to be discussing uh, the guy who you just seen, Jamal Bryant. As I put in the first part of the video, that little message, I know it's kind of hard to hear a preacher or anyone actually use that type of language. But I do want to forewarn you guys that I am going to be having that clip played at certain parts of the video. So if you find that footage disturbing, I would just say uh, just a heads up right now. Um, you know, you guys may want to skip over those parts in the video or maybe just not watch the video at all. That guy is, is Pastor Jamal Bryan, and if you don't know who he is, he is a pastor out of Baltimore, Maryland. And I can't remember the name of his church right now. I'll probably put it, um, you know, right, in, right on the screen before you. But this is a church out of Baltimore, and he is the pastor. And if you are a young black person, most likely you know who Jamal Bryan is and what his ministry is about. But... We're going to go ahead and we're going to talk about Jamal Bryant in this particular video because I was watching watching some videos on YouTube and this video popped up as a recommended video for me to watch and the the title of this sermon was called Don't Make Me Cuss. Now, that that part that I just played that's not that wasn't the name of that particular sermon but the sermon that we are going to actually be watching and addressing is called uh don't make me cuss so basically i kind of put that tidbit in there because i want people to see the contradiction some of the contradictions of what these black pastors do how they kind of take and pervert the word of god but they still contradict themselves because they still want to relate to the world. Now, for all of you who don't know, that term that he just stated in that sermon, that's actually a lyric from one of Chris Brown's songs. And I'm not going to play the song, and I'm not even going to show part of the video or anything of it. Um, but that actually comes from a Chris Brown song, and that's where he actually... I guess he just felt felt like that he was led by the Spirit. It wasn't the Spirit of God. He was led by some spirit to say that in this congregation full of women. And as you can see, these women just went wild. And I just, I mean, it's just beyond me that a woman, a woman who called herself a woman of God, can sit in a congregation and listen to a man speak like that. And still attend the church so basically what I'm gonna do I'm gonna go ahead we're gonna get right into the video we're gonna start talking about it like I always do chop it up dissect it point by point and we're just gonna go ahead and get right into it I'm gonna split this video up into maybe two or three different uh, different videos and I don't know how long it's gonna take for me I don't know how many videos I'm gonna do I'm probably gonna try to split them up in 30 minute increments because just the commentary that I got, or the video clips that I have, total about 45 minutes anyway. And I haven't even yet start to begin to break it down. So I'm pretty sure after I add my commentary, which might end up being another 30 to 45 minutes of me speaking, it's probably going to be a video. It's probably going to be about an hour and a half long. So I might have to split it up into three videos. So just a heads up. This is probably part one. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead. We're going to get right into it. 
and let's address this guy's sermon. I, I really feel uh, what Dr. King called uh, the urgency of now. Uh, that we would be remiss as a church and have some semblance of conscience and not say anything about the 25 black girls missing in Washington, D.C. in the last 30 days. Not one amber alert. Uh, no national outcry. No way on CNN, MSNBC, or Fox. The body of Christ is going to have to stand. All right, stop right there. Um... Now, let me go ahead and kind of go into why, kind of why I am making this video about Jamal Bryant. Well, first of all, Jamal Bryant is starting to become one of these black pastors who are moving into this black conscience cancer. And he's kind of like on the verge of becoming like the guy Kevin Wesley um, also did a video uh, response to his so-called you know converting to the black conscious movement and leaving Christianity saying that he couldn't stay with Christianity because he found out it was a bunch of lies and all of this stuff etc but anyway as I digress he is now starting to take on this role as a person or he's starting to see things the black conscience way so that's why you know when he opened up his sermon he talks about well it's going to take a certain level of consciousness and all of this stuff here so basically saying that you know just because he's a christian he can still be conscious but that is a total contradiction in itself once again i'm going to digress from that point i was going to try to stick to the facts in this video but he wants to discuss these 25 missing black girls that were in dc now this has been a hot topic over all of the black conscience community and uh, people who self-identify with black consciousness and all of this stuff this is like a hot topic It's like well you know how come we can go out and find all of this other stuff but we can't find these 25 missing black girls even Dio Hughley made a joke about it basically saying that you know we can go and find Tom Brady's uh, jersey but we can't find these missing black girls in, in D.C. So the picture that I have in front of you right now is allegedly about half of these black girls who are missing in D.C. Um, and right now we see that there are 12 pictures of these so-called black girls in D.C. Now I'm looking at two of them. Two of them don't even look like that they're black at all. Um, and when we look at five of the pictures five of the pictures look like that they are mug shots okay so it looks like that some of these girls or some of these women have been involved with the run they've had run-ins with the law basically now reports have said that all of these girls and i'm just saying allegedly i don't know i mean some reports said that the stuff is true some of them say that it isn't but anyway some reports say that these alleged girls are runaways, okay, and they are repeated runaways, and they continue to, they have a history of doing this. So, they're saying that allegedly the black conscious community is basically taking this and blowing this all out of proportion, saying that, you know, these girls are not just some victims of some, someone just abducting, uh, abducting them that these are just some girls that just continue to run away they find them they bring them back home they run away again now I go all of that to say that I don't care what their history is or what their past was um, if they're missing and no one can find them that is pretty serious you know I do think that that is serious which I do agree that it doesn't matter what their past is I mean you know a missing person is a missing person but I'm gonna go ahead and plead the case that First of all, that this type of discussion doesn't need to be brought on the platform of the church to try to push a black conscience agenda when you're supposed to be there speaking about Christ and his work on the cross. Now, if we're going to discuss this topic, let's go ahead and address it for what it is. It's sin, not some trying to put some political agenda or something like that. But let's go ahead and continue with the video. 
I said, told you the weekend of the inauguration that this is going to be the defining hour of the church. Uh, are we going to just speak in tongues or are we going to speak truth to power? And God is calling us to a higher level and to a greater place. Just this week, while it is that 25 girls are missing in 30 days, it's going to blow your mind that one of the girls was found, Bishop Bryant, in the apartment of a D.C. police officer <clears throat> who was running a prostitution ring of teenagers. Right now, while you are seated safely in this sanctuary, 5,000 black women and black girls are missing. 5,000 in the United States of America. And nothing is being said, nothing is being done. All right, so as you can see, um, his whole focus and attention is on, you know, black women and black girls. And I'm not saying that, you know, we shouldn't be, you know, talking about black women and black girls. And this should be something that's swept up under the rug. Because sometimes these issues are swept up under the rug, especially when it comes to the black community. Um, but the thing is, is that it's not just black women and black girls there are people all over the world who are missing just like in the sex trafficking thing i mean you got girls from all over the place i mean china india of course here in the united states europe so this is something that is taking part on a global scale it's not something that is just synonymous to the black community and black women now as a pastor, he should be addressing the issue as a whole, not just the black community. So basically what he's doing, like I said before, he's trying to do this the same way that the black conscious community would do it. Trying to play to black people's emotions by passion, passing this, you know, black power agenda. We understand clearly that the weapons of our warfare are not carnal but they're mighty under God for the pulling down of strongholds. I would that you would please, if you'll indulge me, I really just feel led of God to do this. I want all of the girls in this room under 17, would you come to the altar please? If there, you have a toddler, a small child, you can bring her up yourself. But all of our young ladies under 17, I need for you to come. I would, if you'll allow me, please, if you'll stretch your right hand of faith towards these young ladies. I want to just anoint all of them for divine protection. That God's hand will be on their life. That no hurt, harm, or danger will be able to befall their dwelling place. I want you right where you are. Would you stretch your right hand of faith? And now that you've done that, would you just begin praying for them? I want angels assigned to all of these young ladies. God, I want you to bless them going to school, coming back from school. Keep them away from every predator. I pray, dear Lord, that no incident, I pray that nobody with the spirit of perversion. All right, let's go ahead and stop it right there for a minute. Um, now, this is where the sermon starts to get interesting for me. Now, I don't know how true it is. Allegedly, uh, a few years ago, Jamal Brown was caught up in a scandal where he was allegedly cheating on his wife and his wife filed for divorce. And allegedly, he got a 17-year-old girl from his congregation pregnant. I'm saying all of this allegedly. I don't know how true this is. I don't know if it's false or if it's something that's made up. I don't know if it's accurate and it's on point. Um, if you guys know that this stuff is accurate, go ahead and just leave a comment in the comment section. But, you know, like I said, I don't know if this stuff is true or not. But I digress. The point that I'm trying to make is that I'm noticing him laying hands on these girls, these young girls. Now, and I'm just going to keep it 100 with you guys. No grown man should be laying hands on anyone, any child, any woman, uh, no pastor, no male pastor should be laying hands on anyone um, except for the man, his congregation, 
his elders, and you can't really say that nowadays. I mean, because you even got some of these pastors that's, you know, homosexual or bisexual, and they're laying hands on other grown men and turning them out. But once again, I digress. Let me stop right there. Um, but my point is that your pastor is not to lay hands over you if you're a woman and your children because he's not your spiritual covering. Your spiritual covering is supposed to be from your husband. Now, I understand that in the black church, we have a lot of single women. The men are not coming to a lot of these black churches. Some of these women probably are married, but their husbands are not there. Some of these women, their boyfriends or their baby fathers or whoever are just not there. So these women are basically raising these daughters or, or raising their children the best way that they can. But I know in the black church, this is a common practice and we think that it's okay and all of that stuff. And I'm not saying that Jamal Bryan is some type of pedophile or anything like that. But when it comes to church structure, see, we have to understand what the structure of the church is and why it's important for the man to be in the house. Why it is so unbiblical for one man, one pastor to be the spiritual authority over so many other women that's why in my last video I called for a church reformation of the black church we need to start preaching family the fathers of these girls are supposed to be their spiritual covering and these women are supposed to have men who are supposed to be their spiritual covering and they're supposed to be the head of their households but like I said before, I know that these somebody, a lot of these women are probably single women. So where do they get that spiritual covering from? You don't get it from your male pastor. This is where you need to go to Christ. And you need to ask Christ to give you or to provide you your spiritual covering, which is a good godly man, not a pastor will be able to get close to them. I pray right now, dear Lord, you'll block and cover them from every demented teacher and coach and minister. I can't hear nobody and family member and next door neighbor and babysitter and child care provider. I can't hear nobody. I pray right now, dear Lord, that you'll keep them safe from her demented cousins and stepfathers and mother's boyfriends. I can't hear nobody. I pray, dear Lord, that you will, in fact, be a hedge fence of protection. I break of the cycle of molestation and incest. I pray, dear Lord, that you will keep them away from internet predators. I pray right now that none of their phony friends will get them entrapped into a cycle of behavior that is beyond their grasp. I bind every attack of the enemy that doesn't want to see them do well. I pray right now for spiritual purity. I thank you, dear Lord, that there will be no question of sexual identity and orientation. I thank you that none of these girls will ever have to endure the trauma of an abortion. I, I thank you that none of them will ever have to deal with rape. But thank you, dear Lord, that none of them will in fact succumb to sexual peer pressure. But I pray that you'll build up a high tower of protection around their heart, around their life, around their soul. Thank you, dear Lord, you've already chosen appropriate husbands for them. Thank you that they'll never be in domestic violence. They'll never be in fear of their lives. Thank you that they'll never be victims of emotional violence. Thank you. They'll never have low self-esteem. They'll never reject their body type. Thank you, dear Lord, that they'll never feel a moment that they're not beautiful and desirable. God, I give you glory that they're going to go where no other woman in their family has ever gone before. And those of you, your faith connects with the faith of your pastor. All right, stop right there. Um, did you catch the part where he says that their faith will connect with their pastor? Uh, you know, like I said, once again, when you're a pastor, your congregation is not supposed to agree with your faith. Your faith is yours alone. Now, you can't 
pray for someone to connect with your faith. What you can do is that you can pray for them to repent and turn to God and submit their lives to God. That's the only thing that you can pray for. You can't pray for them to connect with their pastor. Would you open up your mouth and give God glory? I can't hear you. I said, would you give God glory? Now listen, when they're going back to their seats, I want you to partner with me in doing this. When they're going back to their seats, I want you to just speak over them words of encouragement. Hear me, not just about physical attributes, not just you're pretty, not just you're cute. When they're going back to their seats, tell them how brilliant they are. Let them know they're the smartest ones in the class. I can't hear nobody in here. There's more to femininity than your curves and your shape and your hair. I can't hear nobody. But we're raising thinking women. We're raising business women. I can't hear nobody. We're raising women of character and integrity and spiritual connectivity. I need you right where you are. They're going back to their seats. But I want you to speak words of affirmation. Let them know you're going to college. You're going to be a CEO. You can go back to your seat, princesses. Come on, give God some glory for them. All right, so here's... Um, did you catch those parts where he said we're raising business women, we're raising CEOs and thinking women? Not once did he mention that these girls will grow up to be great mothers, great stewards of their home, to go out and marry godly men. So the things that he was praying over these girls were things that the world has set as a standard for success. So when it comes to the church and when it comes to especially when you're raising females or, or girls in the church or, or women. Um, we're not trying to raise women to become CEOs and saying that your focus is to be a CEO and to go to college and to basically be a business woman. Now, I'm not saying that there's anything wrong with those things because I don't want anyone, any, you know, Feminists to start saying well, you know a woman can do whatever a man can do and you shouldn't say that that just sounds so sexist I'm not saying that but see we're not talking about the world standard. We're talking about the godly standard now I have two girls myself and I'm not raising them to Go grow up and to become something that the world has told them that they need to be I'm raising them up to be godly women Women who are going to be filled with the word of God. Because that's the most important thing that they should have. Because let's be honest. I know a lot of black women who are CEOs and business women and have a lot of college education. In fact, I think that there's a statistic going around saying that black women are way more likely to get a college degree than anyone else on the planet that black women are basically the most educated women uh, in the world but black women yet are the most single and some women some black women will never be married and some of them will have children out of wedlock and they'll grow old and they'll die alone and I think that the the last statistic that I saw was more than 55 percent I'm not I'm not sure if that's the number, but I know that it's more than half. More than half of black women will probably not be married. And I can say that part of the problem is that we are teaching our black women to not be women. We're teaching them to go out and to do something else. We're not teaching them to be what they were created to be, which was which is mothers and wives and stewards over their own home we're not teaching them that anymore we're teaching them to focus on plan b because just in case plan a don't work out which is you know find yourself a good husband you know make sure that you have um a state uh, a stable marriage make sure that you're submitting to your husband and i'm not going to go into the whole submission thing and i know a lot of people are probably going to get triggered by me saying that but that's a topic for a whole nother video and if you guys want me to elaborate on that 
uh, drop me a comment in the comment section below and I'll and I'll make a video on that but those are not the things that we're teaching our girls we're teaching them to go out and focus on plan B get your education become this successful businesswoman become the CEO of this company because we need more black women as CEOs and businesswomen and a lot of these women are growing up achieving these things and they're miserable and they're wondering where are the good men at where are the good black men but I just want to say that that, that was pretty interesting that that he would pray those type of prayers over uh, young black girls last week ladies and gentlemen the residents of DC had a town hall meeting with the police commissioner of Washington DC and the parents in obvious and appropriate moral outcry asked the chief of police what should they do to cover and to protect their teenage daughters is gonna amaze unnerve and anger you to know that the chief of police in open microphone told the town hall meeting if you have a black daughter who is a teenager the only thing you can do is keep her home can you imagine that in 2017 that the only remedy is to just keep her home. Many of you were bombarded this week on social media. Those of you that saw anything on social media relative to these missing girls, would you lift up that hand for me? All right, first point, I kind of agree with the chief of police of keeping your daughters home, which they should be anyway. And I'm not saying that, you know, you're just supposed to just box them in and tie them up and, you know, not let them see the light of day. But my thing is, is that I live in an area which is, I wouldn't say, uh, I mean, predominantly black, but there are a lot of black people in my area. Uh, it's kind of mixed and diverse where I live uh, here in Atlanta. But I do see a lot of black girls, a lot more than some of these other girls that, that live in this area. Um, they're out, you know, especially all times of night, walking up and down the street uh, in groups. And I mean, I'm not saying that they're prostitutes or anything like that, but they're walking up and down the street late at night and some of these girls are I mean maybe 10 to 14 15 just strolling the streets at night you know hanging out with their friends and a lot of times I ask like where are the parents you know that there's no man in the house you know that there can't be a man in the house to just sit back and let his daughter outside like that but the thing is is that this goes back to the family structure because if there's a strong godly man in the house then you should have a wife that understands and is able to submit to her husband and like i said not to be a doormat but a woman who says listen i trust this man with all of my heart to lead this family the right way if you have that type of structure a godly man is going to say or a rational thinking man for that matter is going to say my daughter should not be out there she shouldn't be hanging out all you know at the mall all by herself 14 15 years old especially in the day that we're living in now and he's just like, can you believe in 2017 that the solution is to keep your little girl home? Uh, yeah. I mean, look at all of the sex trafficking that's going on. Look at the look at the ages of these children who are being sex trafficked. I mean, so yeah, in 2017, you better keep your daughter home if you know what's good. I have a 10 year old, and I have a five year old at the house, and they're with me all the time either with me or they're with their mother they're not going anywhere by themselves i would not dare to let my 10 year old go walk in the mall with her friends by herself i don't even care if she was with um some family members who were uh a little bit older than her i remember that was one of the things growing up you know i was 10 11 years old and you know i had a cousin who was like 15 16 and you know we would you know go to the mall and stuff by ourselves but in 2017, you just can't do that. And let's just be honest about that. In over one month, 25 black girls missing from 12 to 16. I got to ask you a question. What do you think would be the outcry in this country if 25 Jewish girls were missing from Pikesville? I can't hear nobody in here. If 25 Irish girls was missing from Dundalk, y'all still ain't saying nothing to me. What would, in fact, be the moral fiber of this nation? A community is only as healthy as it treats its women. As you can see, uh, Jamal Bryan is certainly and clearly pulling a race card. 
saying that, well, you know, if there was Jewish girls missing or there was white girls missing or something like that, you know, there would just be the, like, the, you know, just this outcry going on. Uh, you know, like I said before, when it comes to these 25 missing black girls, um, I mean, you can just look at the picture. It's like five of the pictures are looking like mug shots. I mean, it looks like that some of these girls I've had run-ins with the law. So it's not like that these are just some 25 innocent black girls. And I'm not saying that all of them have a criminal record or they all have a problem with running away. But I mean, at the same time, I mean, you know, certain reports said that these girls have a history of that. So I even sit back and not mention that, but you know, you want to try to pull the race card, do like what the black conscious community does, and basically try to play on black people's emotions to try to make it seem like that, oh well, you know, white people don't care about us. You know, they don't really care about us.